Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, we'll be discussing a new derivative rule, the sum and constant multiple rule, and we'll also be using the power rule. This is material from section 2.5 of the book, which is called Basic Differentiation Properties. And more specifically, this material is from the middle of page 148 to the middle of page 150, just parts of examples 4 and 5. And the relevant homework is 2.5 exercises 35, 37, 39. So recall the derivative rules that we learned about in the previous video. We learned about the constant function rule, which says that if you have a constant function, then that function's derivative is 0. And we learned about the power rule, which says if you have a power function, f of x equals x to the n, then the derivative is f prime of x, which is n times x raised to the n minus 1 power. In this video, we'll learn just one new derivative rule. It's called the sum and constant multiple rule. The book actually presents this as two separate rules, the sum rule and the constant multiple rule. I find it clearer to just combine them. So it goes like this. If f of x and g of x are functions and a and b are constants, then if you have an expression built this way, these constants multiplying these functions, and you take the derivative of it, then you can do kind of the obvious thing. It's an expression that's a sum, so it breaks into a sum of two derivatives. That's the, uh, the sum part of the sum and constant multiple rule. And furthermore, in each of the separate derivatives, the constant multiple comes right through the derivative sign. So the derivative of this quantity a times f of x plus b times g of x is equal to this, a times the derivative of f of x plus b times the derivative of g of x. Now in prime notation, this is a little bit cleaner. If you have an expression of this form, constants a and b multiplying functions called f and g, and you take its derivative, there's the prime symbol indicating you're taking the derivative of that, well, then the result is this. a and b are going to be multiplying f prime and g prime. So we will do three basic examples involving the use of this new rule. First example is similar to 2.5 number 35. This is a mistake. This should say find f prime parentheses t if f of t equals minus 3t squared plus 12t plus 15. So that's just a typo. All right. Well, so we set it up this way. We write what we're going to compute on the left. And then on the right side of that equal sign, we start computing it. Now notice a new thing here. We have a variable that's t, not x. So normally you take the derivative of something by putting d over dx in front of it, if the variable is x. But when the variable is t, we put a d over dt in front. Now notice that we have two numbers that are constant multiples multiplying a function. And then we also have a sum there and a sum there. So let's apply the sum and constant multiple rule. When I do that, I end up with three separate derivatives. And in each separate derivative, if there is a multiplicative constant, it comes right through the derivative symbol. So notice that negative 3 came through that derivative symbol. And that plus 12, those are both multiplicative constants. They came right through the derivative symbol. And we have those plus signs showing up there and there. Now, in this last term, we did not have the 15 come through the derivative symbol because that 15 is not a multiplicative constant. That's actually a constant function. All right, so let's go on the next line and write what happens next. First of all, some things are not going to change. We're going to have a minus 3 here, and we're going to have some parentheses for the result of this derivative. 
and we're going to have a plus 12 here, and we're going to have some parentheses for the result of that derivative. And then we're going to have a plus 0 here because we use the constant function rule to take the derivative of 15. Now, how do we take the derivative of t squared? Well, realize that we have the power rule that would look like this if we wrote it off to the side. So there's the power rule applied to this term. Now, we can just do this sort of in line with the rest of the work. So in other words, we don't really need to do the power rule off to the side like that. What we have here circled is the left side of the power rule. And the power rule says we can replace that thing with this expression. So that expression is going to go here. Now, what about this? Here we've got the left side of the power rule with n equals 1. So what we can do is we can replace that with the right side of the power rule. The right side of the power rule says that derivative would be 1 times t to the 1 minus 1. So what we used here was um, the power rule with n equals 2. And what we used here is the power rule with n equals 1. Now let's simplify this. And there's our result. Now it's worth noting that we actually found this same derivative uh, a couple of videos ago using the definition of the derivative. That was much harder. And we got the result that we just got here. We found that f prime of x was equal to negative 6x plus 12. Let's go on to the next ex example. This one is similar to 2.5 number 37. Find y prime for this. y equals that thing. OK, now notice the slightly different style of notation. Instead of saying dy dx or df dx, we have just find y prime. But it's just another derivative problem. So there's how we set it up. We, we write y as a function, y of x. And our y prime is going to be a function, y prime of x. The, the authors did not show the variable there, but it's clear if you show the variable. So y is a function, y of x, and y prime is a function, y prime of x. And you get y prime by taking the derivative of y of x. All right, so now all I've done is set it up. Now we're going to do the exact same approach that we did in the previous example. The previous example, we started by applying the sum and constant multiple rule, and then we applied other rules next after that. So let's apply the sum and constant multiple rule. So notice that I broke this up into three separate derivatives. In, in the ones that have, in the derivatives that have constant multiples, I pulled the constant multiple through the derivative symbol. Now we're going to apply the power rule to this term, and we're going to apply the power rule to this term, but we're going to apply the constant function rule to this term. So let's write down the stuff that's not going to change and the stuff that's really easy. So there I put my multiplicative constants 5 and 7 in front of empty parentheses where I'm going to show the result of these derivatives. And then I have over here this number 0, which is the result of using the constant function rule. All right, now look. What we've got here is the left side of the power rule with n equals 3 fifths. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in these parentheses down here the right side of the power rule with n equals 3 fifths. So notice, I mentioned this in the last video, the left side of the power rule has the d over dx and there's no arithmetic going on with the exponent. I, I have not pulled the exponent down. I don't do anything on the left side. On the right side of the power rule, all this stuff happens. You have the exponent pulled down in front, and you have some arithmetic happening with the exponent, and you do not have the d over dx symbol anymore. Okay, now let's do the same thing over here with this term. We have a power function with n equals minus 13. So that's so this expression here is the left side of the power rule. It has the d over dx. Now let's put the right side of the power rule down here. So we're going to copy down the n minus 13. We're going to write x and we're going to have a superscript minus 13 minus 1. So notice in both of these lines I don't do this arithmetic in my head in the first step. I write down just what the power rule says to do, but I don't do it yet. I do that the next step. That's not terribly hard arithmetic, but if you try to do too many small steps in your head, it's very easy to mess one of them up. So I find it's clearest to just um, keep uh, the steps short and simple. All right, now let's uh, simplify this. Notice that these fives cancel, leaving me with 3x to the minus 2 fifths. However, on this term I get 91x to the minus 14. Now, these are both in power function form. Let's convert to positive exponent form. The result is it's very important to note that the thing that has the negative exponent gets moved down to the denominator. But the thing that is sitting next to it doesn't go down there. That exponent minus 2 fifths is not attached to that 3. So that 3 stays up top. And in this term, that exponent minus 14 is attached to the x, not to the 91. So the x goes down, and I've got a mistake here. This should have gone down to the bottom and become a 14. So there's my y prime. Notice the, the layout of this problem. I wrote the thing that I was going to be computing on the left. And then I put an equal sign and I started computing on the right. And as I uh, did computations, each computation got a new line and I came down the right side with a new line for each new computation. So I don't do anything with the left side. The reason I do that is because this whole page reads as one great big sentence. y prime equals this, which 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 equals this. Now here, I really could have just left it like that because what this great big mess of writing says is that the very first thing that I wrote down, y prime, equals the very last thing that I wrote down. So this is like a great big accordion. When it's all uh, pulled out wide open, you see all the folds, all the um, terms on all these lines are like the bellows of an accordion. But when you squeeze it together, what you would see is that y prime of x equals this thing. It's just one great big mathematical sentence. Let's go on to the next example. Our third example is similar to 2.5 number 38. Now I see that there is a typo here. We're supposed to find this. Now what's a little bit confusing here is that there is not really a, a function named in this problem. There's just this expression, and we're supposed to find the derivative of it. 
I think that's really not very good writing. I, I think the authors include this kind of problem just because you're going to encounter writing that's not always as clear as it could be. But I think we should name th this function. So the thing that we're supposed to take the derivative of is what I'm going to call g of u. So what we're being asked to find is g prime of u. So let's do that just the way we've done the last few problems. So we'll do what we did in the last couple of problems. Start by using the sum and constant multiple rule. So when we do that, we write down we're going to do that. And the result will be... So that's all I do. That's all you get when you use the sum and constant multiple rule. It doesn't tell you what these derivatives are going to be. You're going to do that in the next step with a different rule. All right, in fact, we'll do that now. We're going to use the power rule on both of those terms. Now let's make a space for our results. So here we have a, a power function with n equals 1.5. And what we're looking at here is the left side of the power rule. So let's put the right side of the power rule here. So we'll write down the n, 1.5. We'll write down the u, and we'll write down the new exponent, 1.5 minus 1. But I'm not going to do that work in my head. I'm just going to leave that as 1.5 minus 1. Over here, we have a power function with n equals minus 0 0.5. And we're looking at the left side of the power rule there. So we're going to put the right side of the power rule here. We're going to write down our n and then we're going to write down our u, and then we're going to write down our new exponent. And we write down what we did. Now finally, we simplify. And convert to positive exponent form. Notice the negative exponent of negative 1.5 brings the u down to the, to the denominator, where it becomes u to the 1.5. But the 4 stays up top. So our final result is that g prime of u is this thing. That's the end of that example, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.